Good morning. Welcome to our service, our Sunday service. I'm Dr. Neil, suffering with allergies today. So I did not say mine. I do not own the right to this music. But I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. Be careful what you ask for because he will try you. Yeah. 
careful for what you ask for. If you say, try me now and see, he will try you and he will see. Hallelujah. He oh, tried me I'm and on. he was I'm able to me. see me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Father, I come before you in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I, bl I bless your holy name, God. I thank you, Father, for allowing me to come here once again today. God, I thank you for your mercy, your grace, your long-suffering, your patience, your kindness, your forgiveness, God. I thank you, Father, for all your goodness, because all goodness come from God. Father, I thank you for Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, that came into my life, oh God, that I would have life and I would have it more abundantly. God, I thank you for caring about all our needs because your word says, bring all your cares unto me for I care for you. God, I thank you right now for traveling grace back home for my family. God, I thank you, oh God, for your eyes going to and fro in the earth looking for someone to bless. So, God, I ask you to stop by today. Bless those on Facebook. Bless those, oh God, who are sick. Bless those who are burdened down. Bless those who are behind prison wall. Bless those who are in the nursing home. Bless those, oh God, who does not even know you are your dear son. God, I ask you to draw today by your power because Yeshua said no one can come unto him except you do the drawing. So God draw, God, that when we come into Yeshua, he said, no way I will cast you out. God, let us know you give us freedom of choice today, freedom to serve and freedom not to serve, freedom to obey and freedom not to obey. God, I thank you for the freedom you give unto us, O oh God. But you tell us, although we have that freedom, do not use it for an excuse to sin. So God, I ask you to bless today. Let no one use your word for an excuse to sin. And God, although some people may not understand this teaching, O oh God, give them wisdom, knowledge, and above all, give them understanding because I will obey whatever you put in my spirit to do. Although it's not a jump hallelujah teaching God, but we know it is your word, your truth that make us righteous and holy. And God, I bless you for your word today. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First of all, just in case we have anyone out there that has not been adopted into the family of God. The Bible teaches us how we are justified by our faith. If we believe on God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, we are justified by our faith. The same way our father was justified, we are to be justified the same way. He believed on God and it was credit to his account as righteousness. Other words, when we have faith, it's credit to our account. But there are so many other things that are required for us to do. Once you're adopted out of the world, sin is no longer imputed upon you, credit to you. Sin is now something that we do and we allow the devil to do through us. So now the Bible teaches us other things that we need to do. When you go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, it says that we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him, that's Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead thou shalt be saved. For out of the heart man continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai, that's the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continue to believe, and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. When you go to 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsakes his sin, mean repent, shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper. So many times we do not even go to justification. When we're trying to get someone adopted out of the world into the family of God, we use the word, are you saved? The Bible doesn't say, are you saved? It says you are to be justified by your faith because we was born unjust without God because of that first Adam. The second Adam is Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven, showing us the first Adam sinned, but the second Adam did not. So you can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. This is why Paul says, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, because we can hear but not receive. And what did he receive? How the Messiah, Christ, died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and raised on the third day according to the scripture. And then he said, whereby you are being saved if... You keep in memory what I preached unto you. Well, many times we hear things, but we might not keep it in our memory. Because once a seed is planted, same job is to come and root up that seed. Today, allergies are trying to attack me. <clears throat> My throat start itching. So I rebuke that in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. I shall not cough today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says, bring all your cares unto me, for I care for thee. So I know he does not want me coughing. Hallelujah. We are continuing with our teaching. We started probably over a month ago, coming out of the book of Deuteronomy. We started with chapter number 30, and we went to 26. 28, 29, and so we are continuing with that teaching. Now, I'm going to read what I wrote out there. Knowing everyone will not express this with hallelujah and praise the Lord, it's important to allow the Rosh HaKosh, the Holy Ghost, to guide and have his way. Although no one may come to Facebook, no one may not listen, no one may not care, I'm to be led by the Spirit of God. That's why I said knowing. Because we've been teaching about curses and blessings for a purpose. So a person just will not think God command blessings. He also command curses. So this is why we're going through this book of Deuteronomy. And so many people would say when they read that book, that's the Old Testament. But I tell people, I do not even have a page in my Bible. So the Lord told me to rip them out many years ago, and I did that. Because it's not the Old Testament, as we said. When Yahshua speak of a new covenant, He's speaking of a new covenant in my blood, not a new covenant in God's Ten Commandments. So these are what God wrote with his fingers, engraved with his fingers as we went through the study uh, last week. I think we covered that part where they were supposed to put plaster and write them. But God engraved them, the Tenth Commandment, with his fingers so they could never be removed. And so now they are to be in our hearts. That's why the Bible says circumcision is, means nothing. What does mean something is the keeping of God's commandment. So we go right back to what we call the New Testament where Yeshua Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Other words, he came to uphold the commandments of God. That's why the Bible says we are not under the law to God, but we are under the laws to Christ. In other words, God gave Yeshua a command, many commandments actually. And that's why he teaches us the words I speak, they are not mine. 
The words I speak is from him that sent me. So the words I teach, they are not mine. The words I teach today, they are not mine, but they are the words of him that sent me. Other words, God sent his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua the Messiah sent his disciples. That's why Yeshua says, as my father sent me, so I send you. We know there are some people go and there are some people are sent. Now, if we're sent by Yeshua, we're not just sent to teach about how God want to bless us. If we're sent by Yeshua, we want to teach God and grafted word. Not that only that God want to bless us, which he does. And I want him to bless me going in, coming out in the city, in the field, when I come and when I go. But also to teach about the curses when we disobey God. That's why we are seeing this study, how he said all these blessings will follow, shall follow you if but. All these curses will follow you if but. And so we want to get both sides because sometimes... We just look at one side as I have a left, I have a right, and I have a left. Well, someone may just lean to the left, someone just might lean to the right. But I want a balance. That's why the Bible speaks of a just balance. Other words, a balance is you're going to teach both because you don't want people to feel like they condemn. There's no hope. You do not want anyone to feel like you can live in a way you can and you're going to go and enter into the gate. So we don't want to deceive people. We want to tell them the truth as the word of God teaches us the truth, but gives us choices to obey the truth or what? Or reject the truth. I choose to believe the word of God over anyone else. I do not care about a title on someone's name. You could be a prophet, a prophetess, a pope, or preacher, or teacher, evangelist, or whatever. If it does not agree with the word of God, I just will not receive it. And you should be the same way. Do not receive everything come out of people's mouth, everything that you see on TV or whatever. Go back and check it out. See if it agree with the word of God. Because if we receive what is the word of God, it's going to bless us. But when we reject the truth, we come under a curse. That's why Yeshua said, I was sending people. You see that, um, I think it's in Jeremiah, don't quote me, where he said, I rose up early in the morning, sending prophets unto you. But you kept casting my word behind your back. Other words, and I stopped speaking. Well, that's what's happening today. When the word of God comes to us, we re keep rejecting the truth. Then we're going to receive what? Lies and deception, stuff that does not compel us to change, stuff that just make our flesh feel good, but not making us good. So we want to teach what is right in the sight of the Lord and give people freedom to make the right choices. So again, <clears throat> knowing everyone will not express this with hallelujah and praise the Lord, it's important to allow the rush Harkos, which is the Holy Ghost, to guide and have his way. That's why Yeshua says when the rush Harkos, the Holy Ghost come, he's going to testify on my behalf. He's going to testify of me. So if we have the Holy Ghost, we're to be saying what Yeshua said. We're to be saying what Yeshua taught. We're to be saying what those disciples taught. Other words, if we're looking at something back at uh, Deuteronomy or whatever, and it says something about circumcision, that was done away with. Circumcision of the heart. We see that back in where we call the Old Testament, when we see sin offering, wave offering, and all of that, this is where we rightly divide the word of truth because also back there, the Bible said, I have no had no pleasures in those sacrifices. I had no pleasure. This is what I have pleasure in. Obey my voice. 
So when we read the word of God, it's like hearing the voice of Yeshua the Messiah. And we are to obey that word. Hallelujah. When the time arrives, and I am going to expound on these and share the scriptures as we go forward. When the time arises that all these things have come upon you, both the blessing and the curses which I have presented. In other words, you both always mean two or something, right? Remember what Yahshua said, they hated both me and my father. So here it said these things will come upon you both the blessing and the curse. So there are two choices that are set before each and every person. Two choices. He tell us he's going to set them before us and we're to choose one or the other. I choose the blessing. I hope you do too as well. Choose what's going to bless you. Do not choose what's going to make your flesh feel good and it's going to curse you. No, you want to choose the blessing and the curses of there so you will not fall under the curse, but you will stay under what? The blessing. The tradition of passing on and down important teaching and values continue. Obedience to these teachings come with promise, blessing, but fulfilling a condition is necessary. This condition is expressed through the phrase, but if, two choices. Adhering to what honor now the Lord says will bring blessing. While refusing to pay attention to these teachings will result in curses. Blessing, and I have that out there on Facebook as well. Blessing, if. Curses, if. Deuteronomy 28 continues. A blessing, a blessing, a blessing, a blessing, a blessing. Why am I saying that? We'll go through the, uh, we're not going through that whole, uh, uh, whole verse because I covered it last week, but I want to go back where we stop on how many times he says a blessing, but if and but. I don't know the Lord will order a blessing if. But if you refuse to pay attention to what Adonai, your God, says, a curse, a curse, a curse, a curse. The following blessings are promised for obedience, but with a condition if. These blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because. So where we stop on uh, Monday night was Deuteronomy 28, and I was coming out of the complete Jewish Bible. So in verse 3, it speak of a blessing. Verse 4, a blessing. Verse 5, a blessing. Verse 6, a blessing, a blessing. Now I'm picking up on verse uh, number 8. As I said, I covered this last week, but I want to bring us back into where we stopped. I don't know the Lord will order a blessing if. But if you refuse to pay attention to what I don't know your God says and. So we're picking up on Deuteronomy 28 verse 11 reading from Complete Jewish Bible. I don't know will give you great abundance of good things. I'm not reading the whole verse. Just paraphrasing where we stop. Verse 12. Adonai will open for you his good treasures, the sky to give you land, its rain at the right season, and to bless everything you undertake. You will lend to many nations and not borrow. All of these has to do with what? A condition. If you obey me, this is what I'll do. But the other side, if you do not. Verse 13. I don't know what make you the head and not the tail. Boy, we love to say that. <coughs> I'm the head 
and not the tail. But there's a condition. Verse 13. I do not will make you the head and not the tail, and you will be only above, never below. If, see, that's condition. <laughs> if you will listen to, observe, and obey the missa commandments of Adonai your God. So this is the condition. I'm going to do all these things for you. If you would listen to observe and obey the commandments of Adonai your God. And, and Adonai, I'm reading from complete Jewish Bible, is the Lord. And that Lord, it capitalized, capital L, capital O, R, D. And that's why when we study scripture, we'll see capital L O R D. And then we're going to see capital L lowercase O R D. But as we went through the study, when the Bible was translated, everything was in low cases. That's why people have a hard time now trying to separate. They was all in low case, but what they did, they started using uppercase for God the Father, capital L, uh, low case O-R-D for Yeshua, because both was called Lord, both were called Adonai. That's why David says, Adonai said to my Adonai, sit on my right hand until I make your enemy your footstool. In other words, it was God the Father that said to Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, sit on my right side to our right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Curse on disobedience. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Now we saw the blessing with the if. Now let's look at the but if, and this is what trips many of us up. We'll look at the blessing, but we miss the but and the if. That means there's a condition. As he said to Solomon in the book of King, if you obey me, if you keep my commandment, then there shall never be another king to exceed you. Well, we saw there was a but in if, and he warned Solomon if he did, he was going to tear that house down. Well, that exactly what he said, because Solomon did not always have a perfect heart. He started out with a perfect heart, then his heart was no longer perfect. So that's why when we read verses, sometimes it can deceive us. We can misunderstand it. So that's why it's always good to study the chapter. Sometimes you need to go back before and sometimes go into the other chapter. This is what I do. When I uh, use verses many times, not many times, all the time, I have read the chapter, which means maybe I didn't read the whole chapter today, but I guarantee you I have read it because I read the Bible three times again from Genesis to the book of Revelation, not bragging, but the more we read, the more God's revealed to us. The more we study, the more God revealed to us. That's why I try to read something every day, study something every day, because I do not know everything. And that's why I want him to make things clear unto me. Hallelujah. If something is not clear, I, when I was many years ago, I said, Lord, give me wisdom, give me knowledge, and give me understanding like Solomon. Then I started say, saying that, and give me the love of Yeshua the Messiah. Because I want the love of Yeshua, because Yeshua came to bring forth truth. So curse on disobedience, the first one I read, oh, let me see if I finish that. But if you refuse, it's talking to the same one. But if you refuse to pay attention to what I don't know, the Lord, your God says, and do not observe and obey all his mitzvah and regulation, which I'm giving you today, then all these following curses will be yours in abundance. In other words, the same way these blessings are going to overtake you, now these curses are going to do the same thing if we obey. New King James verse, uh, Version, reading the same verse, curse on disobedient. But it shall come to pass... If you do not obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. Notice that word today, 
Because many times when we look at certain things about obeying statutes and commandments, we always go back to, we think, you know, circumcision, blood offering, uh, picking, uh, pitching blood, and all that blood that would they would use to cover sin, but did not take away sin, because when Yeshua died, all those other sacrifices was done away with. He had no pleasure in those sacrifices because they wasn't changing people's heart. But the word of God will change our hearts. That's why his word is like a two-edged sword. It cuts so it can get all of that stuff out of us that should not be there. Then he Healed. That's why Yeshua is the great physician. He came to heal us from sin and sickness. Sin is the worst sickness we can have. I can go to heaven, enter into the gate with a bad heart, or no leg, no arm, one eye, no lips, one ear, or whatever. But if my heart is messed up and I am in Yeshua, I will go to heaven, but be cast back down to hell. That's why Yeshua teaches us, he that is exalted into heaven will be cast back down to hell. Who's going to be exalted in he to heaven? Only those who are in Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Because the person that's not in Yeshua, the Messiah, has not been justified by their faith. They are ungodly without God. They will not be judged. They will just be cast into hell if we study the word of God. You can find that in Psalm chapter number 1. You can find it in Peter where it says, If judgment first began with us, those disciples, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? Letting you know they will not enter into those gates. So that's why we need to deal with sin when we're alive. When we're dead, it's just too late. Some people are praying for dead people, wasting their time. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Who want anyone to be cursed? I do not. If I wish a curse on somebody else, that curse can come upon me because I'm wishing it on somebody else. No, I do not do that. But because of God's word, God is going to send the blessing. God is going to send the curse. That's why it says God will sin and these things will overtake us. That's why in Matthew 28, Yeshua tell uh, his disciple, teach everything that I have commanded you. Teach everything I have commanded you and I will be with you always. Many times we read that verse and we say, Jesus says, Yeshua says, he's going to be with us always. He was speaking to those disciples. If they taught what he commanded them to teach, he was going to be with them always. If we teach what he commands us to teach, he will be with us always. That does not mean he's going to be with everybody that have a title on their name, carrying a Bible, but they are not teaching what he commands them to teach. Hallelujah. That was the Rosh Holy Ghost. Again, 29, 28. If there is such, oh, I didn't get this one. I covered this. Uh, no, I did not. I think I don't think I did. But this is so powerful if you really study this. If there is such a person, when he hears the word of this curse, he will bless himself secretly, saying to himself, I will be all right, even though I will stubbornly keep doing whatever I feel like doing so that I, although dry, sinful, will be added to the water righteous. Now, this is so powerful because this is exactly what people are saying, but I'm going to paraphrase it. When people are saying, once you're saved, you're always saved what they're saying. Once you're in Christ, you'll never go to hell. That is not true. 
That's a lie from the pits of hell. And this is what Satan want us to believe. In a way, I wrote a book years ago called A New Revelation. Once saved, always saved. Once saved, not always saved. Once saved, our choices. Other words, say if I go out there and I have an accident, I was delivered. That word saved means delivered many times. I was, I think all the time, actually. I was saved from that accident. That would never change. I was saved, delivered from that accident. I did not get hurt. But that does not mean I can never be in another accident. Because what I was saved from, it doesn't change because the Lord saved me. He protected me. He delivered me. I didn't get hurt from that accident. I didn't lose my life. But that doesn't mean I can go right back out there and those bad things can come up on me. So in a way, it's right, but the understanding of it is, in to is totally wrong. And that's why many people just never ever change. They're walking around. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I will never go to hell. Well, evidently they have not read Revelation. I think it's chapter 19 or 20 where the Bible says none of these things will enter into the gate. Evidently they have not read many scripture where the Lord said, I will take out of my kingdom all things that are fin and do lawlessness. That means break his commandment. Now, we will take a verse and we can misunderstand it all together. There are so many people still teaching that doctrine that if you're in Christ, you can never go to hell. If you're teaching that ministers, ministries, repent because it's not in the word of God. That's why I tell people, stop teaching what the Bible never said. As they would say, you know, uh, I cover myself with the blood of Christ. I tell people, I don't teach that because there's no, not one word in the Bible that says, plead the blood or cover yourself with the blood. It's just not scripture. He told them, Smite the blood, Moses. Smite the blood on the doorpost, not smite the blood on you. And so many times we just pick up stuff and we run with it. It has nothing to do with the scripture. So when I tell people I'm in Yeshua, I do not make provision, excuse to sin against him. Since I'm in him, it doesn't mean I will never sin. But once I sin, because the Bible says there's no one that sin is not, then there's another scripture that says the righteous sin is not because his seed remain in him and he cannot sin. So if I'm in Yeshua, why am I covering myself with the blood? I am covered because I'm in him. In other words, if I'm in the car, it rain, I will not get wet. If I'm out of the car and it rain, I'm going to get wet. If I'm in Yeshua the Messiah, I don't need to plead no blood. I just confess my sin and repent. That's what he tell us to do. He never said plead the blood. And some people don't like that teaching, but it's the truth. I tell people, if you can find plead the blood anywhere over yourself, please show it to me. No, he said, smite the blood on the doorpost, not on yourself. Hallelujah. The following blessings and promise for obedience, but with a condition again. If, Deuteronomy 28, 1 again. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, letting us know it's not speaking to anyone that's not God's children. As I said before, you can be a child of God, but you can be a cursed child. We went through that before. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments. Remember again, he told Moses to teach, observe, and do. So it says to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Remember, I'm trying to, I think it's in Deuteronomy 6, do not quote me, but it says, what nation is so great 
that has commandments such as these. Do you know we are great when we have God's commandment because we have a weapon against our adversary? Some people feel like they don't need them. They can't obey them. So the devil is just destroying them because they already curse themselves by saying what they don't need to do and what they can't do, what is not required of them. So listen what it says. Verse 2. All these blessings shall come up upon you and overtake you. Hallelujah, Lord, let them overtake me. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Notice that. This is why they are come up on us, overtake us, because we are obeying the voice of the Lord. That's why God said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him, because Yeshua came to uphold God's commandment not to destroy them. He upholds them. He teach what God said. If you refuse, you will be subject to the following curse. Now, the blessing we do not mind talking about, teaching about, right? But we don't want to hear the other part. People just want to know how God can bless me. Don't tell me what God wants me to do. I just want to know what God is going to do for me. There is a requirement. If you refuse, you will be subject to the following curses. Deuteronomy 28, 15. <clears throat> but if you refuse to pay attention to what Adonai your God says and do not observe and obey all his mister commandments and regulations which I'm giving you today, then all these following curses will be yours in abundance. Curse again on disobedience. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord, your God to observe carefully all his commandment and his statute, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. That was the New King James Version. The first one I read was complete Jewish Bible. Verse 16. Remember what we said. We started out with the curses, and then it went into the blessing, and then it come back and pick up the curses. So actually, we'll see more curses than we're seeing blessing. Why? Because God does not want us to be cursed, people. He wants us to know when we disobey him, curses will come upon us. When we obey him, blessings will come upon us. If we disobey him, and some of us will, some of us are not always sure. We're hearing the voice of the Lord. He tries our hearts. He try, He He know our mind. So when we come short, we're to confess that. Agree with God and turn away. And then that same blood that cleansed us when we were justified by our faith, now that same blood, if I'm in Yeshua, continue to cleanse me so he doesn't hold it against me. That's the goodness of God. That's the mercy of God, which means if I say something wrong, I say, Lord, forgive me. And I turn away and I do not do it. It's just like I never did it. The blood of Christ wash it away, never to bring it back again. Not like the Old Testament, cover it from year to year, and then it keep coming back to you where your conscience can never be clear. So when I confess my sins and turn away, my conscience is clear. People can say what I once did. It doesn't matter because Christ doesn't remember it. So why should I, if you want to hold it against me, go right ahead. Hallelujah. Verse 16, a curse on you in the city and a curse on you in the countryside. Verse 17, a curse on your grand basket and needling bowl. A curse on the fruit of your body. When you think of a curse on the fruit of your body, you know what that means? That curse is passed down from generation to generation unless it get broken. So when, if I'm cursed and I have a child, that curse is passed down. Until that child is justified by their faith and now that curse is lifted. 
other words, that curse can be passed down from generation to generation as the blessing can be passed down from generation to generation. A curse on the fruit of your body, the fruit of your land, our land can be cursed. And the young of your cattle and flocks, they can just die. They can just not produce, have the other calves or whatever because they're cursed. A curse on you when you come in. And a curse on you when you go out. I always say I want to be blessed when I go out. Blessed when I come in. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field when I come and when I go. But look at this. A curse on you when you come in. You can come into your house. And that could be a curse. No peace. No joy. Fighting all the time. Things your kids are driving you crazy. A curse on you when you come in and a curse on you when you go out. You go out. You have no peace in your house. You have no peace when you go out because of that curse. Now, who's going to send it? Many times we are blaming the devil, but we are not looking at who's causing it. Number one, the Bible says God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither does God tempt anyone. We are tempted by our own lusts. But look who sends it because of his word. I don't know, I will send on you curses, disasters. Are we seeing that today in this land? Every time we turn around, tornadoes, floods, fires, stuff is always going on because we have turned from the way of the Lord, which means everybody will not serve the Lord, but those of us who claim the name of Christ, we should be serving the Lord. We should be example to those who are not in the Messiah. I don't know what sin on you curses, disasters, and frustration in everything you sit out to do until you are destroyed and quickly perish because of your evil action and abandon me. Do you not know when we are abandoning the word of God, we are abandoning him? That's right. Because Yahshua again came to uphold the laws of God. That's why God said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. So when we turn away from the word of God, we are abandoning him. Deuteronomy 30 and 1. When the time arrives that all these things have come upon you both, the blessing and the curse, which I have presented to you, and you are there among the nation to which Adonai your God has driven you, then at last you will start thinking about what has happened to you. And I read this earlier because it's so powerful because I wasn't sure the Lord was going to take me through this entire chapter. I wanted to be led by the Spirit. If you tell me to go someplace else, I'm willing to go. If you tell me to continue with it, I'm going to obey Him. And so here, He said, when all these things come upon you, when Adonai your God had driven you, where, you know, which Adonai your God has driven you, then at last, you will start thinking about what had happened to you? Remember, sometimes we do not think why things are going bad, why things are happening to us. We have to be like Paul or should not have to be like Paul. Sometimes we got to get knocked down to the ground before we get up and listen. Sometimes we close our eyes and we allow the devil to blind us. We allow people to blind us and bad things are happening and we don't say why are these things happening to me? Is it Satan? Or is it God allowing these things to happen to me? That's why I always say God doesn't curse us. We bring ourselves under the curse because God cannot lie. Because he told us these things will happen, they are going to happen. In other words, how can I trust God? If he said, but if I do not, this is going to happen to me. But when he say he's going to bless me, I'm going to receive that, but I'm not going to receive the other side. No, we're to receive both the blessing 
and the curse that we will see there's requirement for both. I have presented you with life and death. Now remember, when it says, utter not your God, right there, we should know that speaking to people that are in Christ, you're speaking to people that are God's people. Remember the Bible said God is the God of the living. He's talking about spiritual. He's not the God of the dead, spiritually dead. That's what it's speaking of. So when it said, Adonai, your God is speaking to his people. It's not speaking to the ungodly, those who are not in God. I have presented you life and death, the blessing and the curse. There it is. Life and death, blessing and the curse. With life. What do I do? I want life and death. Do I want to die spiritually? The blessing, do I want to be blessed? And the curse, do I want to be cursed? Because both is set before us. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call on heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have presented you with life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, choose life. Right there. It tell us which one to choose. Let us know. That's why so many of us are trying to control other people's lives. Not realizing God does not control our lives. That's why we're to be led by the Spirit of God. But God is not going to control us because he gives us freedom of choice. We are no longer under bondage. We are no longer under bondage where sin was put upon us now that we are free. That's why I assure that those that are made free, they are free indeed. That's why the Bible says make no provision, no excuse to sin. And so here he presenting these things before me, life and death. I can live for eternity or I can die spiritually. The blessing and the curse. Therefore, choose life. Let us know it is our choice which one to choose so that you will live. In other words, choose life so that you will live. Not just life today and die tomorrow. We are to continue to choose life every day. Not only choose it for myself, but for my descendant. Let me read the whole verse. Therefore, choose life so that you will live, you and your descendants. That means choose life so we can live and those that come in behind us can live as well. Many times we do not think that we are to be good examples to those who are behind us. We're to be good example to those who are following us. I have a daughter. I have two grandchildren who are twins. I have a great grandbaby. So I want to be a good choice for them to follow. I do not want to be darkness because they are going to stumble. I want to be light so they can miss all of these bad things that are happening in the world when Satan come after them. I want to be example. Use the word of God against your adversary. You do not need a knife. You do not need a gun. You do not need your fist. You need a sword and that sword is the word of God. That's what cuts Satan down and people who do not like you that cuts them down as well. Hallelujah. John 7 49 John 7 49 Truly these am hearkens. Now this is a hard word. I never heard of it. It's a, a Hebrew word. It's spelled A-M-H-A-A-R-E-T-Z, in case I pronounce it wrong, do. But now look, look at this. This is in John 7, 49, in case someone says, you're talking about cursing and blessing. That's in the Old Testament. No, there's no page there uh, in my Bible because the Lord said, check it out. So I did. 
That page only say New King James Version. God did not put it there. Yeshua did not put it there. The Rush Hakosh Holy Ghost did not put it there. Man put it there, and by that page being there, it can deceive many people. That's why you go on the internet, you're not going to see that stuff. You're going to see it move from one right into the other. You read a Hebrew Bible, uh, uh, it's not going to say this is a New Testament. No he came in the volume of the book from Genesis to Revelation. Listen what it says. Again, that's John 7, reading New King James Version 49. But this crowd that does not know the law is a curse. There it is. When we do not know the law, we are cursed. And that's why you have to rightly divide the word of truth. What law? See, many times we just look at laws that the Bible not speaking of, like circumcision, wave offering, sin offering, uh, all of that stuff. Those things were done away with. We don't have to worry about that when we're in Yeshua. We just confess and repent. We don't have to make no offerings. Listen to what it says. But this crowd that does not know the law is a curse. Close to being cursed, in the end, it will be burned. Close to being cursed. That's from Hebrews 6 and verse 8. But if it keeps producing thorns and thistles, it fails the test. See, life is a test, whether we believe it or not. That's why we have to study for the test so we can pass the test. Now I'm reading the whole verse, that Hebrews 6, verse 8, complete Jewish Bible. But if it keeps producing, notice, keeps, that means continue, thorn and thistles, it fails the test and is close to being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Well, that's what you call New Testament, right? So when we keep failing the test, we are close to being cursed. But we can what? Repent and start passing the test. Because if we keep uh, failing the test, we are under the curse. In the end, we will go to hell. That's what it means. It will be burned. I'm going to stop at 2831. If you the will of the Lord, we'll pick up on this study tomorrow night. 2821 is where I'm going to stop. And I will bring on you a pledge that will stay with you until he has exterminated you from the land you are entering in order to take possession of it. So we are pick up on that verse uh, tomorrow. But I'm telling you people, when you read all of this under, as we go forward, it's under the curse. So many things as, that we do, the curses are going to overtake us. I do not want to see anyone cursed. I want to see everyone blessed. If I see you with a new car, I know the same God gave you a new car can give me one too. If I see you with a new house, I know the same God that gave you a new house can give me one too. That doesn't mean he want me to have the new car or have the new house. But he said, if I seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all these things will be added unto me. That means we seek God's way of doing things first. That's the most important thing. Seek ye the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of God is. That's what he wants us to see God's way of doing things. We have a way of doing things. That doesn't mean it God's way of doing things. That's why when I come on, again, I'm getting ready to close. When I come on, I always go through justification, which is God's way of making people righteous, not my denomination way of making people righteous, not my way of making people righteous, but God's way. And you find that in Romans chapter four and Romans chapter five. That's why we study that. And we see how righteousness 
was put up on us and David was happy because it was righteousness. He didn't have to uh, offer sacrifices or whatever. And so the Bible said, if we believe on God, this is God's way. If we believe on God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, we are justified by our faith. That's why I go through justification because many people just skip right over. They say, are you saved? Say the sinner's prayer. I have not found a sinner's prayer in my Bible. If you want to say a sinner's prayer, that's someone in Yeshua. And that is coming from 1 John 1 and 9, confess your sin. Hallelujah. The Bible doesn't speak of you are justified by saying some sinner's prayer. No, you're justified by your faith. The same way Abraham was justified by his faith. He believed God and righteousness was credited to his account. But he had to put work with his faith before he could be made perfect, which means complete. So you're justified by your faith. Then you're to confess that which you believe. When you go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, if we confess with our mouth, that means to speak, the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead thou shalt be saved. That's when you see the word saved because everything is established by two or more witness, what you speak and what is in your heart. And then it says, for out of the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Well, if I do not continue to believe that, continue to confess that, I'm failing the test because I'm going to be tried to see how genuine my faith really is. Then you go to Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of God, or now the name of the Lord shall be saved. You go to Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continue to believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Other words, if I continue to believe that, that key word, continue. I am to continue to believe. If I do not continue to believe, then I'm going to be damned. That's Mark 16. Then you go to 1 John 1 and 9. That's for those of us who are in the Messiah, Christ. If, remember, we were looking at the if in the butt. If we confess our sin, agree with God that sin is sin, not to say I'm sorry. If I confess my sins, he faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from what? All unrighteousness, because he said, I will thoroughly, hallelujah, cleanse my floor, not just some. I'm going to get it all out of you. If you stay in me and my word stay in you, I'm going to purge you that you be completely clean. That's why it says, what? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses, continue to confess, he that confesses, and forsake, repent from his sin, shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper. That means we are walking around, many of us, thinking God has forgiven us of our sin. We never acknowledge them. We never agreed with God that, he, that, that sin was wrong. We never turn away from sin and we think we are forgiven? No. That's why I say if you do this, if you uh, confess and forsake. And so if we are sinning, always agree with God that we are sinning and repent. That means what? Turn away. Then that's when the blood of Yeshua cleanses us. But we need to do things first. There is a requirement that we agree with God that sin is sin and turn away from sin. Now the whole world can judge you about your past and you can say, that's past sin. It doesn't matter what I did in my past because I can't change what I did in my past. And that's why the Bible said, now faith, now go forward 
everything is going forward. Do not go back and pick up what we have turned away from. In other words, we're bringing ourselves back under the control of Satan, bringing ourselves, let, letting sin have dominion over us. And sin shall not have dominion over us because when Yeshua is in us, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know the devil hate me. I hate the devil too. So you hate me, devil, I hate you. And I can truly say I do not hate people because if I hate people, I go to hell. That's why the Bible says if you hate your brother, you are a murderer and no murderer have eternal life abiding in him, letting me know that can send me to hell no matter who I think I am, what labor I have on my name. The word of God is true. Let God be true and every man be a liar, including me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you have not confessed, you're sure. Repeat after me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And out of my heart, I am to continue to believe unto righteousness. Father, search our hearts. If you find anything in us that's not pleasing and acceptable in your sight, Father, we ask you to remove it in the name of Yeshua the Messiah and that the blood of Yeshua will cleanse us from all our sins. Father, help us to walk in the truth because it is your truth that make us free. Your truth is light where we can see where we are going. Father, help us to recognize lying spirits because those spirits come to deceive us and keep us in bondage. But Lord, I thank you for your children, Messiah, that came to make me free. And because of him, I have power over my adversary. Satan can make me do nothing. I'm to be led by your spirit, but it's my choice. I can be led by your spirit or be led by the spirit of the anti-Messiah. But God, thank you that I choose to be led by your spirit today and every day of my life. Reveal those things to me that are unknown, things that I can't see, things that I don't understand. Because, Father, you came to send for, you sent your son to bring forth truth, that I would know the truth and be made free. So, God, I thank you right now, and I give you praise, honor, and glory for you, O oh God, and for your son. For your word teaches us, he that honors the Father should honor the Son. He that dishonor the Father is also dishonoring the Son. So, Father, I give you both honor in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining me. I pray the word of God is a blessing to you. And if the word bless you, please share the word of God. We can't go everywhere. We can't minister to everyone, but we can send a word. Remember the man said, Lord, you don't have to go. Just send a word. And so I can't go everywhere, but I can send a word. So the blessing of the Lord rests upon you today in the name of Yeshua. I love you with the love of the Messiah. If you're free, join us tomorrow night for the continuing of this study at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time. Love you all.